So what's up everyone, I'm gonna give you a window into what my day looks like today on a Monday. And if you can see, I've got a little setup here. I've got a book over here to my left, which I'm gonna make you aware of. I've got some food prep going on now. We're gonna walk through that. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the writing and the reading uh, and the study that I've been doing um, today so far. It's, it's still morning. So first of all, I do have my aloe vera here. Of course, I cut it and then I tape it up a little bit. You know, plastic's not always the best thing because it's supposed to be hard on the endocrine system and the hormones, whatever, but make the best of it. So we got that aloe vera. I like to put that on my skin. I put that on my hands. I get really dry hands. I've been getting a lot of sun, so I like to put that. I also like to ingest it. I had a, you know, I had a fractured eardrum when I was younger, when I was back at a wrestling camp and I, I was in the pool and I let someone dive off my shoulders, another wrestler. And when he did that, he kicked my ear and he, he fractured my ear, eardrum. Um, and now, fast forward all these years later, I was just in the pool a couple weeks ago and I, I, I kind of, I was doing these, these di like different calisthenics and plyometric exercises around the diving board, kind of weird, but so I was doing that, I was, you know, just, looking at that diving board and being creative and thinking of, hey, different exercises I could do on it with pull-ups and different dips. And and so when I fell back, I fell back into the pool and, and you know, kind of my eardrum got a little, little pop, felt a little bit awkward, fell hard, and a rush of water in that ear. I wasn't wearing um, ear, I wasn't wearing earplugs. So that ear has actually been bothering me for a couple weeks and just, just to diminish the risk, let's say, the risk of an infection, an ear infection or something. So I've been taking a lot more aloe vera. I've been taking a lot more ginger, making sure I get ginger in my tea. There's a lot of other things you could do, like an oil of oregano. You wouldn't want to take that longer than, say, usually two weeks at a time. You'd cycle it two weeks on, two weeks off. You gotta be careful with that oil of oregano is strong stuff, so you gotta be careful with that. But it does have anti-infection, antibacterial properties to it. You gotta know how to use it, so don't just go using that, okay? But but that would be an option if it got, if that ear got a lot worse. So, but I also love to ingest this. It's great for the gut. It's antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiviral, phenomenal stuff, great price point. Um, you know, my tea, like I said, I'm doing a ginger and I'm doing a parsley in there, so super healthy for, for detox. Um, that ginger is phenomenal, anti-inflammatory. It's got that spice kick to it. You know, some organic honey. I would prefer a raw manuka honey, but sometimes money's tight, so we got an unfiltered honey. We are soaking lentils here. Um, if you can see, I'm soaking the lentils. All I'm doing is just putting them in water, and I'll leave those out depending on, you know, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, sometimes eight hours, and I'll soak those lentils. To me, it helps, um, you know, they, they cook Quicker. So you might be cooking those maybe depending on your palate and the texture you like. You might cook those lentils when you cook them, you know, 15 minutes, bring them to a boil, then simmer them 15 minutes to 25 minutes, depending on you and your your, prep, your preferred tenderness. But I've been, I've been soaking a lot. I soak buckwheat. I cook it. That's a really good whole grain that I trust. You've got some, got some farro in there. I usually will sit that farro overnight. I'll soak it. I'll soak it in the refrigerator. Um, and then cook it the next day. You know, usually they cook pretty quick. The buckwheat might cook in 12 to 15 minutes. But again, I soak that buckwheat sometimes before I cook it. It's a grain, it's kind of like a rice. And I might soak it for eight hours. I, might, I soak the farro overnight. So some of the grains, I do like to soak them. I'd like to get more into sprouting. We've got some baked potatoes here. We're gonna put the oven on 425, 425 degrees. We're going to, to cut these, put some holes in it so it can ventilate and cook more evenly. One of these, be mindful, one of these sweet potatoes is thicker than the others. This one is a lot thicker. So, you know, I might leave this one in. It takes the, the oven a while to heat up. I might leave this one in for, I might put this one on, say, 60 minutes, 60, 60, 62, 65 minutes. First 10 minutes or so is usually the oven heating up. You have to know your oven, okay? This oven takes a while to heat up. This one I might do 65 to 75 minutes, you know, including the warm up, right? It's gonna take a while for the oven, for this oven to get to 425, so it might be 65 to 75 minutes. Know your oven. Your oven might cook the thing at 4, 425 temperature in 45 minutes, okay? Just know your oven. Mine takes longer. So I'm gonna cook these while I'm studying and researching. What else did I do today? I've been reading some Khalil Gibran, who is a 
Lebanese. I have some Lebanese blood in me. Lebanese is basically Syrian blood. He was a, a poet, a philosopher, an artist, very good with drawing. Died at 48. I'm surprised by that, but uh, I've been reading a little bit of that this morning. Very beautiful prose and thoughtful prose and, and distinctive. And he had a line in there. Um, he's coming home, so he's taking his seat. He's been waiting to go home for 12 years, and finally that ship is coming. That you can see that ship is coming, and it's going to take him into the back to his home. And he's going to see people he hasn't seen forever. He's going to see what's become of his city, what's changed, what's changed about him. And there's a line in there where he's referring to the group of family and the friends that he's coming back to, and what you know their thoughts, their sentiments toward him. And he says it's very beautiful. He says, "Much have we loved you, but speechless was our love, and with veils has it been veiled." Yet now it cries aloud unto you, and would stand revealed before you. And ever has it been that love knows not its own depth until the hour of separation. And ever has it been that love knows no debt. I'm sorry. And ever has it been that love knows not its own depth until the hour of separation. That's beautiful. So I was reading that, and also I wrote a song this morning, actually. I, in, in reading this, there were a couple of signs to me there. It talked about some things that and I won't mention them now, but these were things that had been at the top of my mind when I woke up this morning. It's interesting. I have a bunch of books. And I just picked this one to read, and then some of the things in the first five, six pages were things that had already been in my mind. So that was very what Carl Jung would call synchronicity, or some of us might call serendipity or a sign make of that what you will but, but that really did happen digging into that um, I did a post you know I did a social media post where I had showed me reading the book I had my notepad and I was like basically every day it's self-inquiry um, what spiritual and psychological seeds am I planting today in my mind's garden and we might ask ourselves that what seeds am I planting in my mind's garden each day and eventually are going to harvest and reap the benefits of that. I've been studying a lot of some stuff with real estate. Actually, got some things going there. I've been doing a lot of deep diving into real estate and learning a lot there. Um, the I did a song. I actually did a song today too. We're only a couple hours in the day, and, and I had a song. It's not finished, but I love the concept and I love it. it's catchy. Um, I almost wonder if I should tell you the title, but. It's, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll share that with everyone. Songs just come to me when they come to me. I, I write them, I record them, and if I'm really feeling it, then I have an idea to know, well, this song will be catchy. So I actually did a song. I've been learning Italian. I spent about 20 minutes this morning. Buongiorno, um, and, and mangiare, and sonno, and, and uh, you know, and, and, uh, and noi, and, and um, so, I do speak Spanish, and of course I speak English, so I'd love to learn Italian. That's a big part of my heritage, Southern Italy. Um, so I've, I'm, I've been the last you know, three, four weeks, you can tell my, my Italian still sucks, but it's very, it's actually there's a lot of similarities to Spanish, so I think I'll pick it up just fine eventually. Um, we'll have a third language, maybe even learn Portuguese too, since it's kind of similar, it makes sense, right? Those languages kind of fit. So. It's been about 20 minutes on some Italian today, and I had a, a friend who has an interesting name. I've never met anyone with her name, and I've thought about her a little bit lately, and her name actually, ironically, one of the things that came up, came up in this, in the first five or six pages, it's crazy. I'm like wondering, what does that name mean, and what did that name mean to me, like the etymology, and there is a, an attempt at the meaning of that name in the first five, six pages of this, which I just randomly grabbed this book today. So that was interesting. So I was thinking of her and thinking of just writing her and articulating, hey, I think, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, you've had that name your whole life, but this is kind of how I feel the meaning of your name when I say it, when, when, I, when I 
feel it, and this is actually an attempt at the etymology, the meaning of that name. And I'm into that. I'm into the meaning of names, and the vibration of names. Um, you know, so today, later on today, after we do a lot of study and, and writing, there'll be probably about three hours of working out. We'll get to the grocery store and always make time for songs or mantras or affirmations or meditations and prayers. And usually always make time for that. You know, I had a friend the other day, he said, well, you know, I, I used the word prayer around him. He said, well, I'm, you know, I'm agnostic and I have some friends who are atheists. I'm like, well, okay, you call it whatever you want, right? You play a semantic game. It's just a semantic game. You, know, you, you don't like to pray if you think that prayer is exclusively a religious connotation or, the, or suggestive of God's existence or a, you know, some kind of infinite and universal power. If you don't like that, then you can call it a mantra. You can call it an affirmation. You can call it a meditation. You can call it whatever you want that to your mind symbolizes you know something secular something free of something greater uh, be careful with that because you might you know if you if you make it too weak then you might strip yourself of some greater power that might be able to work through you whatever that is if you if you it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy if you think that that there's nothing greater and there's nothing there's nothing infinite and, and, and super powerful whatever you want to call that force or that forza if you have made up your mind that it doesn't exist, then you might just consider the possibility that you might deny yourself the opportunity for something really incredible and amazing and miraculous to work through you. Okay, just that's that's a that's something to consider. But you can call it whatever you want, and that's important. And again, that's the spiritual and psychological seeds that we're planting every day, day in, day out in our mind's garden. That's very important. That's just as important as this food prep and putting this wonderful food in us. You know, lately, by the way, I've been, I've been overeating at night. I got to make a confession. I've been overeating at night. Um, I've been always been a late night eater whenever I'm up, which is why it's usually better for me to get up at 435 in the morning. Right now I have been getting up later. I like to get up early in the morning. I get up more productive. Um, but I've been getting up later and I've been staying up later. I'm just not tired and I'm, I'm staying up later. Last night I was researching real estate before I went to bed, but I wasn't tired. So you stay up, you keep, keep doing your thing and then, but then I eat and I was eating, you know, at least I was eating organic oatmeal with some blueberries and some chia seeds, a little bit of oat, you know, oats, milk, and I actually put some honey on it, which normally I wouldn't. Normally I try to be strict, but I'm like, yeah, I just got to even some sugar, so organic honey. I was sparing with that, but you know, sometimes I'm so strict on myself, I won't even let myself put much honey, use much honey in the day. But sometimes like that, when you have that craving, that craving hit, and man, I've been, I've been getting a little bit, a little bit pouchy lately because I have been eating. I've been staying up late and working and writing and researching and studying and and. Um, been uh, I've been eating that oatmeal a lot and the, the one great comfort for me is well at least you know the carbs like even that oatmeal that can stick to you right so you know if I keep doing that all year I'm gonna probably have some extra pounds on me right on the other hand I'm limiting the damage at least I'm not eating something worse at least I'm not eating total total junk right the carbs can stick to me some but I probably even need it I probably need a little bit more bulk and meat on my but but it's not a great habit but it's kind of the lesser of evils it's like okay it could be a lot worse I could have a lot worse things in my cupboard so you got to have sort of those emergency foods that like when you're weak when you're craving when you're gonna eat late you're gonna do things you shouldn't do even when you're super disciplined you're gonna eat some things you shouldn't you're gonna eat later than you should but at least limit the damage by having some foods on hand that Okay, might put a few extra pounds on you, but it's still pretty healthy for you. It's healthy for your cells. Um, so being mindful of that, limiting the damage. So at least I've been doing that. Okay, so anyway, this is a window into my day right now. If you have any questions, any comments, it's Frankie at FrankieForza.com. I hope you've learned uh, something valuable from this, and, and I wish you a great day.